All right, hopefully I'm recording. So, last weekend, um, <clears throat> went back to the house and made up these battery cables. Um, the goal here is to ensure that we have the same length of cable for each battery. If not, some batteries have more resistance, some batteries have less res resistance, and there's there's a number of variables that we can't control, so we at least want to be able to control the length of the cables. Um, so everything with the red heat shrink is obviously positive, and what I've done is I went ahead and hooked up uh, the battery positive, which is fused on each of these banks, um, to the battery protect input side. Uh, so each of these have power going up to the battery protect. The next thing I've done is I've hooked up these uh, negative battery cables to the negative bus bar. Um, my next step is to come back and uh, take the output side of the battery protect and hook it into uh, the bus, the positive bus bar um, as well. And at that point, um, I should have <laughs> Uh, the full power of these battery banks going up to these bus bars. Uh, so again, you know, these, these cables are, are not cut to a perfect fit. They're cut to all be the same size. Um, if you don't do that, um, you know, electricity is like water, least path of least resistance, right? So what will happen is the battery with, with, uh, with a shorter cable versus the battery with the longer cable more power will drain out of that so you'll get one of these effects where you know this one drains faster of course it'll take the charge faster too so it's going to come up faster so what ends up happening is you end up cycling through um, the battery with with less resistance or with shorter cables um, you end up going through more life cycles quicker than the battery uh, that has the longer cable so we, we definitely want to avoid that. We want these to drain down at about the same rate and drain back up. Um, what I'm going to do now is I've got my uh, remaining uh, positive cables that will come off here. Uh, and I'll go into this bus bar. All right, guys. The more wires I hook into this, the scarier it gets, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. A lot of power going through here. Fortunately, everything's fused, but I do have all this exposed. I'm eventually going to want to put a board in here um, to, to reduce the exposure of all these connections. Um, I'll have to make sure it'll still vent, but beyond that. All right, so we're just going to start hooking in these cables. I'll get us started. I may make some adjustments down the road. Um, but I think once I get some zip ties in place and get these tied up, it's going to look pretty good. Um, all right. Let me get this cover on. I'm going to get my multi-tester. And we are going to see what our battery voltages look like and figure out which ones we can power up. How does that sound? Oh. Sorry guys if you can't see this, but um, it's important that I do, so. 
Let's go take a look at the first battery. And um, it's 26.6. The second battery is 26.65, a few hundredths of, an, of a volt higher, which actually kind of a lot with the lithium. Uh, 26.63. Twenty-six point four five. So that one is really low compared to the other ones. Come in. And see what we're gonna get here. Helps if I'm on the right setting. All right. We are on DC amps. And I'm gonna move it up to four hundred DC. All right. Ten amps. So this guy's sucking some power from from his brothers. Um, nine amps. Eight amps. Eight point three, I should say. Two. Eight point one. Seven point nine. So he's uh, he's drawing some some power down. All right, guys, we are. 400 amp hours tied together. Um, we're gonna let this rest for a little bit, then I'll come back. Um, I'll check the voltages. So I went ahead and made this guy. Um, he'll come right in here. Probably a little taller than I want, but we'll make do. Um, I like to leave most of the space open here for uh, the charge controllers. The solar charge controllers and the, the fuse panel for the, the solar panels, but I think we will be all right. Um, and actually, all the solar power that comes in, we want it to go into this, uh, we want it to go into this um, shunt for the, uh, the amp meter, anyhow because we want it to record battery going in, or power going in and power going out of the battery. Um, we don't want to hook anything else into these directly. Um, let me take that back. As far as the, the negative uh, is concerned, uh, we'll have this here, we'll have the shunt coming off of it, and uh, we want everything to come in and out of that shunt. So if I have to, I'll get another bus bar down the road um, if I have too many things hooked up to it, then I can uh, run the shunt into that bus bar and run any other 24 volt stuff off of it. Muchos better. Senor, I should consider flipping this upside down, but looks like it's too tall. But it would be nice if I could flip it, point it back towards that way. I'm gonna have me sandwich. Probably overkill as far as cable ties are concerned.
Sparky. Maybe that means we're not reporting 24 volts anymore. But I'm gonna fire up the stamp meter or battery monitor and we're gonna find out. Let's see what happens to this battery meter when I fire up a, a battery. 26.62. Uh, now let's see what happens. It goes off. And this thing has a pretty wide operating range. Um, I think from like 8 volts up to 32 or something like that. So um, even a small amount of power or voltage should, should keep it lit. Alright, this guy's on. 26.64 and off again on again off again you guys notice I talk to myself a lot 26.62 well, remind me I have to reprogram this thing I have to tell it I have 400 amp hours not 100 hours. If not, it's going to think I'm empty well before I am because like any good battery monitor for lithium, you want to 26.55. Um, so any good battery for, for or I mean any, any good battery monitor for lithium, you want to, you want to, um, you want to measure based on amps in and amps out. Um, so using a battery monitor. Uh, Victron uh, BMW, BMW, no BMV, sorry, uh, BMV 702 does exactly that, um, and it can handle up to 400 amps, I believe. With a larger shunt, you can go even higher. Um, so, what it's basically doing is just monitoring energy in and energy out, and because lithium has a very flat voltage curve. Um, it's uh, voltage is not a good way to uh, measure the, the uh, depth of discharge or depth of charge or state of charge I should say SOC SOC um, voltage is not a it's actually a very poor way to do it if you're if you're trying to um, implement voltage uh, so some form of uh, battery monitoring via voltage on lithium batteries you're headed down a really really bad path um, because it's just 80% um, of the discharge curve is within um, 0.34 volts. Um, so that doesn't give you a really good idea of where you're at. Um, so again, uh, good battery monitor using shunts, uh, monitoring uh, amps in and amps out. That's what we want to do. All right. Pull the plug on this last one here. And the meter goes off exactly what we wanted to see. I need a break and uh, when I come back we will resume our programming and uh, start getting the Victron in here. <laughs> 